Children are really our most vulnerable population, and while a blood transfusion can be life-saving in a child, it can be life-threatening too. Um, and the line between those is sometimes difficult to find. Patient blood management is essential for managing blood transfusion in very ill patients. However, the doses and diagnoses required in adults are very different in children. To find out how, I'm joined by two experts. Why is patient blood management important? Patient blood management has been identified by the World Health Organization as one of the top five most important issues of overuse in the world. So it's compared with antibiotic, we are definitely overusing blood products and we need to define good strategies to minimize the use of this product. Dr. Gooby, could you elaborate on what specific products are being overused and why is this a problem? So the specific products that are being overused include red blood cells, but also plasma, uh, platelets and cryoprecipitate. And it's a problem because um, Overtransfusion is a major issue uh, affecting uh, children in our hospitals and being mindful of transfusing when needed the appropriate products in a goal-directed fashion uh, would be a good approach. Why are different patient blood management techniques needed in children versus adults? Children are really our most vulnerable population and while a blood transfusion can be life-saving in a child, it can be life-threatening too. Um, and the line between those is sometimes difficult to find. Dr. Dismer, what patient blood management techniques should be used in children? Well, that's a good question because uh, there's not only one technique that we should use. We need to think about a multimodal approach of our patient. It means that the strategy of blood management has to start before surgery, can continue during surgery and even beyond surgery until the patient is discharged, all with the effort of improving the outcome of our patient. We've been collaborating with Boston Children's Hospital and Genoa Children's Hospital to try to improve the care of uh, babies having surgery and we're using antifibrinolytics like tranexamic acid, we've been doing some work with that. Uh, also just good anemia management, restrictive transfusion th strategies, uh, and the most important thing really is just to try to keep the blood in the patient because it's a vital organ um, and that's the really the safest thing for our babies. What are the most striking innovations you've both heard about today? So I think that the future is to identify the correct dosages of every single medication for children and neonates and also we need to clarify and improve the non-invasive techniques because blood drawing is another big issue, so the most we can improve with non-invasive techniques, the better it will be for our patients. I have to add that it's really basic good surgical technique, good anesthesia technique and the collaboration between the two and also just recognizing early that 25% of our children are anemic and just diagnosing and treating that appropriately before surgery. I understand that new guidelines for pediatric cardiac surgery have been announced. What are they and what are the differences between cardiac and non-cardiac surgery? Um, Dr. David Ferroni spoke about uh, bleeding management and cardiac surgery and there's really new great guidelines that are evidence-based and expert consensus. And those guidelines I outline um, all the major differences and similarities between cardiac and non-cardiac. Um, and some of the differences are that uh, you need the cardiopulmonary bypass circuit, so the blood is circulated outside the body. And in order to do that, uh, it has to be primed, so the blood is diluted. And then the trouble with trying to keep them warm uh, during all of this long surgery. So there are some differences in that cardiac surgery is you know, one of the biggest, most riskiest surgeries with the highest blood loss in our pediatric patients. Fascinating. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you, Thank you for having us. Pleasure. Euroanesthesia TV is brought to you from Euroanesthesia 2019, the European Anesthesiology Congress. For more videos from the Congress, make sure to click these links and subscribe for much more from the world of medicine.